Hello and welcome to another episode of these JavaScript tutorials. Today I'll be showing you how to center an element horizontally as well as uh, vertically. It's very easy to center an element horizontally with CSS, but it's difficult to create a cross-browser CSS solution for vertically centering, especially if you want the element to stay centered when the user resizes the window. But by using JavaScript, it's actually quite easy to achieve this uh, effect. Uh, you can see an example here uh, of the final product that we're going to create. And notice how the centered element stays centered no matter what size the browser window is. I have uh, created a simple HTML document here in Dreamweaver. And you can see here in the browser the default uh, HTML display. We will need to add a little bit of styling. The only element we will have to style is uh, div itself. So I've given it uh, an ID. Uh, I've just called it center div. Uh, and now I'll just uh, add some style tags in the head section of the document and uh, apply some rules uh, to the div element. And the selector was center div. Uh, we need a background color. Uh, I'm just going to select a gray color. Uh, I'll also give it a width. It's not needed, but I'll specify it anyway. And I'll give it some padding to make it look a little better. And here's the important part. Uh, you will have to give your div an uh, absolute position. Because the style properties that we are going to manipulate with the JavaScript is going to be top and left. And just to make sure that your div stays on top of other elements on your page, uh, you can give it a high C index as well. And now we can start coding the JavaScript. And I guess a good place to run the JavaScript would be uh, right here after the element. So I'll just make some room and create a script opening tag, type text JavaScript, and I'll just close it off right away below. Now the way we want to go about this is that we want to measure the dimensions of the user's browser window. And then we also want to measure the dimension of the element itself. And then we will do a few calculations with those dimensions in order to center the element. So to start off with, I'll create a variable um, to store the width of the browser window. In modern browsers, we can access the window's width by getting the value of the window inner width property. So for modern browser support, we will have to set that variable to window dot inner width. But to access the window width in uh, Internet Explorer seven and eight, we will need to get the value from a, a property of the document element called client width. So in order to get the right uh, width and height values for our variables, we will need to perform a little uh, check. We will do that with an if and else statement, but before we do that, uh, we should declare our variables with an uh, initial value. So I'll just declare our width variable called my width with a value of zero, and I'm also going to create a variable called my height with an initial value of zero. So now we can construct the if else statement. We do that by typing if, and then we add a couple of parentheses for the conditions. Then we'll open and close a set of curly brackets. The else statement don't take conditions, so we just need to add the curly brackets here. Now in the conditions, we want to check if the browser uh, returns a value for inner width. Because if it does, then we can assign the values uh, of inner width and inner height uh, in our if statements body. And if it doesn't, then we can instead assign 
the client width and client height uh, to the variables inside the else statements body. So the code I'm typing in now simply evaluates if the value of the inner width property is a number or if it's undefined. So now we can assign a value to the my width variable and we'll set it equal to window inner width and of course we'll do the same for the my height variable instead we'll just set it equal to inner height in case the evaluation doesn't receive a value then we can assign the client width and client height values to our variables in the else statement here Now if you want support for Internet Explorer 6 and below then the client width and client height is actually a property of the body so uh, then you will need to perform another evaluation But I'm quite happy with this and uh, gladly gonna ignore those legacy browsers. Next thing we will have to do is to create a variable that contains uh, our div element. Uh, and I'll just call that variable center div, just like the ID. And uh, then I'm just going to use the document get element by ID method. So I'll have to target the ID name, center div. Now we can easily work with this element in JavaScript. I'm also going to need the width and height of the center div element. So I'm going to create a variable called center div w for the width. And instead of just typing a static value in here, I'm just going to get the value from a property called offset width. Because that way uh, this code will work no matter how small or big the uh, div element is. And the padding is uh, included in the offset uh, width property. And I'll uh, do the same thing for the height of the element. I'm going to store that in a variable called Set a div h for height. Only difference is I'm going to get the value for that uh, variable from the offset height property, of course. I do apologize for uh, that the code is jumping up and down here. It's uh, because I got the code highlighting on in uh, Dreamweaver, and every time I have an unfinished uh, sentence, then uh, the error message pops up and uh, shifts all my code down. I hope you'll be able to uh, read it anyway. Now we can finally center our element on the screen. First we will center it horizontally. We do that by adding a value to our style lift property. And to get the center of the window, we'll uh, take our window width variable and divide it by 2. But we don't want the left side of our element to be aligned with the center. We want uh, the center of our element to be aligned with the center. So we will have to subtract half of our element's width from the window width. So we'll divide the my width variable with 2. And we're also going to divide our center div's width with 2. And that value is going to be subtracted from the first calculation. And when we're styling something, we'll also need to add uh, pixels or percent. So uh, we'll just attach uh, px at the end as uh, string data. And to center our div vertically, we will uh, do uh, the same thing, except that the style property we want to change now is top. And then we'll, of course, use half of our height variables instead of the width variables.
and we'll also add the pixels to the end of the variable. Notice that the plus sign has nothing to do with the calculations. It's uh, simply tying the string data to the variable. Um, we can see in the browser we have a problem here. The horizontal uh, centering works fine, but not the vertical. So uh, let's go back in the code and see if there's an error. Yes, here's the error. It's the wrong variable name. And now it's working, except that uh, when I resize the window, then the div is not moving uh, unless I refresh the page. And that is because the JavaScript code is only running once uh, when it loads. So to fix that, we will uh, wrap the code up inside a function. So I'm just going to create that and I will give it a name, center the div. As always, when we construct a function, we will need to add parentheses. Uh, we're just going to leave those empty. We're not going to pass anything to the function. And we'll also add uh, the curly brackets uh, around the code. Now, uh, we will want two different events to uh, use this function. A window onload event that will call the function as soon as the page has loaded and a window on resize event that will uh, run the function every time the browser window is resized by the user. Here's uh, one way you can create events in the JavaScript and have them share a function. I'll simply type the event and then attach it to a anonymous function and the function I want to run is uh, then called from within the anonymous function body. So now every time the window onload event occurs, uh, then the function is running. And we do the same thing with the window on resize event. Set that equal to an anonymous function. And inside the function body, simply call the named function. So every time a window resize event occurs, then our function will be executed as well. And I might as well copy and paste the function code here. I'll just indent the code inside our center the div function to make it a little more neat. And that should be all there is to it. Now I'm running the page in Chrome and you can see that uh, everything works correctly. But it would be interesting to see uh, how this is running on various versions of Internet Explorer. I just have to allow uh, JavaScript to be executed locally. Allow block content. And of course in Internet Explorer 9 everything is working great. But let's try to see how it renders in Internet Explorer 7. I'll just hit F12 uh, and uh, that will give me access to the developer tools. Then I can uh, set the browser to act as Internet Explorer 7. And we can see uh, because of our if else statement, then the code is running fine here as well. So that concludes this tutorial. I hope this was useful to you. If you have any comments or critique or questions, feel free to use the comment box below. Anyway, thank you for watching and don't forget to like, share and subscribe.